You're listening to the Greek's Gridiron, live with Ethan Haristadoulou. Welcome back, everybody, to the Greek's Gridiron. I am Ethan Hersadulu, and today is Saturday, the 22nd of January. I've got a doubleheader of previews coming at you guys today to kick off today's doubleheader of the NFL Divisional Round. We got two games slated today, two games slated tomorrow, and I'm previewing tomorrow's games today. Wrap your head around all that. And uh, we are talking here Rams versus Buccaneers, the earlier of the two games tomorrow. So make sure you hit that like button down below. Comment down below who you guys think is going to come out on top in this game. Do you have the Rams? Do you have the Bucks? And let's talk some playoffs, shall we? So the Rams coming in to visit the Buccaneers. The Rams already have a big victory over the Bucks earlier in the season. Uh, both of these teams looked Somewhat different going into that initial matchup. Uh, you know, we had Deshaun Jackson over there in L.A. Odell Beckham was not a part of the team. Von Miller was not a part of the team. The Buccaneers had Chris Godwin at the time. Um, I did, did they have Leonard Fournette in that game? I cannot remember. I believe they did. There was a, a slightly different makeup offensively and defensively for both of these teams health-wise and also just like who was actually on the team compared to now. So... While they did match up already once and the Rams did get a 34 to 24 victory, things do look different going into this game. Now, before we start deep diving into things and whatnot that I want to watch as we go uh, watch while we go through this game, let's talk about some of the X factors, the guys that I think need to have some big games and need to step up and stand out for their team to come out the victors in this one. And for the LA Rams, I think it goes without saying Matthew Stafford needs to be on his A game if he wants to be able to take down Tom Brady and the defending Super Bowl champion Buccaneers. Aaron Donald needs to show up and be the number one NFL player that he is in the league because year in and year out, you could argue he is the best football player in the NFL just because of how dominant he is at his position, the defensive tackle spot. Then, of course, Jalen Ramsey, the consensus number one corner in the NFL. He needs to be on Mike Evans all game long, and he needs to do it well, he cannot be letting up massive catches. He needs to be locked down, no scores. You know, if he's having a good game, two, maybe three catches. And if he holds Mike Evans to about 35 yards, excellent. But the guy that I think who needs to stand up and show up and show out for this Rams team on the defensive side of the football, a guy who is fairly familiar with Tom Brady in the playoffs and has had a fair amount of success against him, has got to be the addition that came during the middle point of the season, former Denver Bronco and current LA Rams linebacker Vaughn Miller. The guy has seven and a half sacks in his career against Tom Brady, including the playoffs, including two and a half sacks during the 2015 AFC Championship game when he was on the Broncos playing against the Patriots that brought the Broncos into Super Bowl 50. He has the experience. I think he knows a bit about how to mess with Tom Brady, and I think having him there is going to be a big piece in how they decide to attack this Buccaneers offense, and I'm excited to see how they get it done. Von Miller's had his success. You know, he's been able to get after Brady and he was a very large proponent in that Broncos team coming out the victor in that matchup all those years ago. So I'm excited to see this one here. Von Miller needs to step up and be the big addition to this team that he was during the midpoint of the season. For the Buccaneers side of things, Tom Brady, I mean, I think it goes without saying he's probably going to have an excellent game as he seems to always do at this point in his career, league leader in passing yards and touchdowns. I mean, the guy has just been fantastic this year. He was really good just last week as well, and I think he's going to continue to do that for, you know, and until I'm retired <laughs> at this point, it feels. Uh, linebacker Shaq Barrett and linebacker Levante David, I think this defense looked a lot different with both of these guys back in the fold. The defense looked much more dominant much more aggressive, really able to shut down the run. They were definitely missing Levante David for those few weeks that he was out with an injury, and I think getting him back has really brought some juice to this team and much-needed juice at that at the perfect time as they make their run through the playoffs here, dominating the Eagles last week, and I think they'll continue to dominate going into this game as well, being very effective for this linebacking core. But the guy that I think who needs to stand out the most is the guy I actually labeled last week during the Eagles game as well, has got to be wide receiver Mike Evans. He is the last man standing of that like trio of wide receiver monster that they put together over there in Tampa Bay. 
Antonio Brown is gone. Chris Godwin is down. He had nine catches, 117 yards, and a touchdown versus the Eagles. That's what I talked about as saying he needs to step up and be that number one receiver. He needs another stat line like that. Maybe even another catcher, too, to push him closer to like 130, 140, and then maybe a touchdown or two if he's really having a good game and able to win his matchup against Jalen Ramsey. He's got to be the guy for this team, the go-to guy. Of course, you're going to have Gronkowski doing his thing in the middle there, but but he needs to be the premier wide receiver that everyone looks at him as for this team to be successful here today or tomorrow, excuse me. Now, for some things to watch that I've kind of identified that I think will be key points in this matchup and definitely worth paying extra attention to as we go through this game. I have three things labeled for you guys in the first one being the Rams pass rush taking on the Bucks pass protection. This is probably one of the most like statistically like top top forces coming head to head this weekend. And and I, I guess that's an interesting way to, I don't know how to, ex, I don't really know how to explain that in a better way. So please tell me down below if you have a better way to kind of put that together. But statistically speaking, the Rams pass rush, the third best team in the league with sacks 50 on the year. They're tied at 15th for pressures, only 161 on the year, but they're still able to get after the quarterback and get it done despite the massive size of pressures that they have compared to some other teams. Whereas when you look at what the Bucks O-line has done this year, they are the best team in the league at keeping Tom Brady upright. We talked about this a lot last week with the Eagles, and I was saying that if they cannot pressure Tom Brady, they cannot beat Tom Brady, and Tom Brady seemed to be getting that ball out every two seconds or less sometimes when he was rocketing that thing out so I mean again the thing the same thing that I pointed out last week as another thing I'm pointing out this week the Bucks O line one of the best in the business the Rams D line one of the best in the business I mean they know what they are doing and they know how to do it well the Rams have Aaron Donald to be rushing after the quarterback Vaughn Miller Leonard Floyd and a guy like Greg Gaines who you might not hear about but had a fair amount of sacks himself and is able to cause some pressure there they have a litany of guys there that are ready to go after the quarterback and bring Brady down whereas the Buccaneers you got Donovan Smith Ali Marpet Tristan Wirfs this truly is a star studded match matchup in terms of D-line versus O-line, two of the big kahunas of the league going at it. I'm really excited to see this one here because it's literally the best of the best on both sides of that football, staring right at each other face-to-face every single time they are on the field. It's going to be a fantastic matchup, and if you're a fan of line play, this is a game to be paying attention to. Now, second thing that I'm going to be pointing out here and something I'll be keeping an eye on and I think will be huge for the Rams is going to be if Cam Akers and Sony Michelle can be effective against Tampa Bay's run defense. Tampa Bay, 92 and a half yards on the year allowed per game, third best in the league, and they've allowed only 11 rushing touchdowns total through the year, also tied for third best, whereas versus the Cardinals, Cam Akers carried 17 carries, 55 yards, average about 3.2 yards a carry. Not a ton, but he had some really hard runs. He looked fresh. He looked ready to roll, and he looked, I mean, glad to hear Buda Baker's okay. I'm happy to see him healthy, uh, but that run that Cam Akers had, he was running with some steam on that play specifically. You could see the drive in his legs when he was flying down through that play there. Sony Michelle, 13 carries. He had 58 yards, 4.5 yard per carry as well. Uh, the first time these two teams met up against each other, the Rams rushed for a total of 24 times for 76 yards on the day, which is statistically not a necessarily great game there. That's a handful of carries to only be coming out with 70. Honestly, 24 carries and under 100 yards, not a really, not a terrible average, but not really a great average either, per se. It's it's honestly very average, per se. I think the Rams running game, them being able to open things up more, uh, and the loss of Andrew Whitworth this week is probably going to hurt that running game a little bit, but for this running game to be effective against this run D, I think that both these running backs need to tote the ball if And honestly, that like 20 to 25 time range is probably going to be good. They need to be accumulating more yards than just the 76. I think if this team can cross maybe like the 100, 110, maybe 120 line, they'll be good to go. You want to take as much pressure off of Matt Stafford as you can. And not because I don't think he can get the job done with the pressure on the line. He has, I I believe, some of the most fourth quarter comebacks or game winning drives since he's been drafted in the NFL. I mean, the guy has constantly had to come from behind his entire career playing with the Lions, but more so is that 
a balanced attack is a far more effective attack, and I feel like when this Rams offense is more balanced than just pass heavy, they look like a much better team, and you can feel more confident in what they are doing. I felt like when I was watching them play the Cardinals, they were running the ball fairly well, they were throwing the ball fairly well, and it just felt like everything they were doing was working, and that's what you want. You want to be able to keep the defense honest. You don't want them to stack the box too much. You don't want them to be not stacking the box and just kind of defending the pass every single play. And you don't want them to be just be expecting passes every single play. So a healthy balance is key for this game. And I'm curious to see if they can handle that Bucks run D. Now, this point kind of works the same for the Buccaneers. Because my third point that I'm bringing here is, can Tampa Bay commit to being a more balanced offense themselves? The reason I'm bringing this up is because the first time these two teams met... Tom Brady was the leading rusher with only 14 yards on the day for three carries. That is a little bit ridiculous. And when the final total numbers came in, they had 35 yards on 13 carries. 10 of those carries came from the running backs. The other three was Brady. Um, They'll be minus Chris Godwin in this game. A, we didn't play last time they played either. So that doesn't really matter too, too much in terms of like the scope of the matchup previously. But because of that, They have to be looking to try to establish the ground game a little bit more. Ronald Jones is not going to be playing in this game. Leonard Fournette will be, so there is that for them. They are going to be getting Fournette back for this one. Uh, Brady attempted a whopping 55 passes during that last game that they played. Completed 41 um, of the total passes, 432 yards, one touchdown. Despite all that, could not get the job done. A much more balanced rushing attack is necessary for them to get through this game. I don't really think you can drop back and just pass. I know that the, you know the Rams have the safety issues and whatnot, but a balanced game, especially this late in the season, I feel is necessary to help you advance through the playoffs. I'm thinking like 20, maybe 25 carries or so to like 30 to 35 passing attempts would make a huge difference for this team in moving the ball effectively and not just relying on Tom Brady to set back in the shotgun every single play and just try to, you know, make things happen. He's talented. Don't get me wrong. I, I believe in Tom Brady and I have a hard time betting against Tom Brady at this point, but just having him drop back and pass every single play is going to be it essentially just makes the task much easier for the Rams defense because it's less for them to have to figure out. Uh, The Rams did not have their pass rusher of Von Miller in that previous meeting as well. And they're definitely not afraid to rush their stars. So if they, you know, they, they need to force this defense to be more conservative because it feels like the defense, especially their pass rush has been getting more and more aggressive as like Von Miller has found his role within that defense. And you can't just be trying to drop back every single play and force Tom Brady to throw the ball and just let them kind of tee off on Brady because the key to beating Brady led teams is to keep him upset and frustrated or frustrated, frustrated, and flustered in the pocket um and you can't just Aaron Donald Von Miller Leonard Floyd you got so many guys coming after him balanced game keep the defense honest do not let them just come after you and send crazy blitzes and bring the pressure all game long now for each team I do have a disadvantage labeled for the for both of them and not too different from what I labeled them for last week Uh, for the Rams Taylor Rapp is not going to be playing. It was announced that he's going to be out for the game. Fuller, of course, remains out as well. So dealing with that lack of safety depth is going to be a problem. Eric Weddle didn't really get tested too much, but, I mean, he did a solid job in his debut, or re-debut for the Rams, I guess you could say, for this season. Did a solid job. Um, But again, he didn't really get tested too, too much against the Cardinals. They really couldn't get a whole bunch going offensively. Uh, So I'm curious to see how he fares going up against Tom Brady and his group that he has there. For the Buccaneers, it's just the depth at wide receiver and now the depth at running back a bit. I it, what, it's I mean again, kind of the same thing as it was last week. They do get Leonard Fournette now, which is really good for them. So they have Giovanni Bernard and company sitting behind him to help back him up. But Fournette, you assume, will be leading the way for the most part. Then of course the wide receiver thing, Godwin, AB gone, all that stuff, yada yada yada. We talked about it last week. Um, that really just kind of doubles down to you really need. Evans to have a good game and Leonard Fournette to kind of maybe return to that playoff Lenny form we saw last year and try to balance things out for this offense. And I just don't know if they're going to be able to do that because I don't really know how healthy Fournette is going into this game. Now, for my predictions, talking about the spread, the over-under, the final score, who is going to win this game. For the spread, 
Bucks are sitting at currently at the time of this recording, and I'm recording this on Friday night. You guys are seeing this Saturday morning. Uh, it is sitting at Bucks minus two and a half and Rams plus two and a half. Um, I've seen the line kind of tote somewhere around like two to three in between there. I think it went from the last I saw it, it was at three, and then I just checked before I went to go record this for you guys, and it had dropped back down to Bucks minus two and a half. So it's just been kind of hovering within that like three to two and a half. And I can't remember if I saw it at two range. I don't think I did. I think that's a different game that I'm thinking of. That might be Bucks or not Bucks. I'm sorry, Bills and Chiefs. Uh, but I, I do kind of like this line. I I don't think that realistically speaking this is going to be a game that anyone gets blown out. I understand the Rams won by 10 the last time they played. I just don't know if a Tom Brady led team is really going to let something like that happen. I could see them losing a close one, but I do like the Rams potentially upsetting for this one here. So I'm not too sure about that Bucks minus two and a half. If I'm being completely honest with you guys. I don't know if I really like that Rams two and a half. I think I do like, uh, as for the over under, um, 48, I think that's an easy beat. Um, I could definitely see the over being hit here. I understand that the Buccaneers have a fairly solid defense and the Rams have a fairly solid defense. But the last time these two teams met, the final score was 34 to 24. And that puts you at 58. Uh, yeah, 58. So I don't know if I really see both of these teams struggling to get over like that 21 to 24 range. I definitely think this is something that could finish with a fairly high score. Um, I think both teams are really going to bring it offensively in this game. Sean McVay, of course, you know, with the creative offense that he runs there and he has all his pieces and he's drooling all over himself. I know he loves what he's got over there. Uh, and then, I mean, this this high powered Bucks offense, I could see a fairly high score line for this one. And I definitely think I like the over here. As for the final score and who I think is going to win this game, the Rams and the Buccaneers head-to-head -head for a shot at the NFC Championship. My pick for this one, and God damn, do I hate going against Tom Brady on this, but I am going to pick the Rams for this one here. I like the Rams. I like the pass rush that they have. Um, you know, Eric Weddle, again, I, he didn't really get tested a ton, but they did a solid job safety-wise. The secondary looked really good. They were getting a lot of participation from guys you really wouldn't expect the numbers to be coming from in terms of interceptions and whatnot. Uh, I like the Rams overall. I just think that they're the healthier team. Uh, they got more of their group back than I think the Buccaneers do offensively. Uh, and I just, I, I don't know. I have a hunch. I want to see Matthew Stafford win a ring this year. Um, and, you know, that's probably slightly swaying my decision a bit. Um, but also, I have such a hard time picking against Brady. But I think that, I, I don't know. Something doesn't feel right this time. Something doesn't feel right over in Tampa Bay. I don't know what it is. And maybe I'm just reading too much into it. But I like the Rams 38 to uh, 31, excuse me, to 28, which obviously, of course, leads you to believe that I do think the over at 59 I, I I like 59 points in this game. I could definitely see 52, 53 happening at least. So that is my predictions for this game. I appreciate you all for watching. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Who's coming out on top? Is it Maddie Stafford and the boys in LA or is it Tampa Bay and the Buccaneers? Let me know. I'll catch you guys uh, later in the day because there's going to be another video for the Bills and Chiefs. So make sure you check that out as well. Have a good rest of your day. If I don't see you later, have fun watching some divisional round playoffs, everybody.